while the whole world and the whole internet has been talking about this fasting study that came out that shows that fasting and caloric restriction are no different in terms of end result. What is intermittent fasting and should you be doing it? Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional information online. In this video, thanks for sending them, I'm going to be listening to Tom DeLauer. Tom is a massive internet influencer in the keto, low carb fasting space, carnivore at times, and he's going to be reviewing some studies about intermittent fasting. Be sure to wait till the end till you get my final thoughts. I want to thank our friends at Element for sponsoring today's video. Element has a great mixture of sodium, potassium, and magnesium, everything you need on a keto diet, especially when you're starting the keto diet. I use the Element almost every day in my own life and recommend it for my patients. Element is great because it has no fillers, no sugar, no artificial colorings and flavoring, it, no gluten, great for a keto diet but the most important thing is it tastes great. As you know, electrolytes are really important, especially if you're following a keto or carnivore diet, and Element gives you the sodium, potassium, and magnesium that you need. Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packages free with any order. That's a great way to try eight different flavors and to share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinklmnt.com forward slash Eric Westman. This offer is only available at my link, drinklmnt.com forward slash Eric Westman. You'll find that in the description below. Thank you Element for sponsoring this video. There's another paper that was published that nobody was really talking about that actually looks at real, more aggressive fasting. What do I mean by that? Well, the previous study, and I've done some videos on this that takes a look and says fasting is the same as caloric restriction. Although I agree with everything it said, everything, nothing I disagree with, well-crafted study, it was looking at very short term, like fasting periods, like, or very short fasting periods rather. It was very, it was like 14 hour fasts, which I don't know, but without even thinking about it, I fast for 14 hours and a lot of people do. So well, so what is, intermittent fasting and what is fasting and there's a lot of jargon that goes on here you know you don't have to do intermittent fasting uh, although i'm finding into the keto or even weight loss world people enter through different doorways if you will and then uh or like you're going into a vendor area at a meeting if you come in and the first booth you see is intermittent fasting and you do it and you might think that's the only thing that is available and certainly promoters of different diets or different techniques only talk about their technique typically because they are most familiar with that or they make money from that technique or sell a book that sort of thing but there are really a lot of ways to go about being healthy i believe and intermittent fasting and or keto or carnivore or ultra low fat diets they all can be healthy what you want to do is match your metabolism to the level of carbohydrates in the diet from my perspective. So what is intermittent fasting? Well, several internet influencers started talking about fasting and, and the, in general, it means eating less and, and eating less often during the day. So that if you eat once a day, that's a 24 hour fast because you've gone 24 hours without eating anything because you've eaten just one meal a day. You might've heard that as OMAD, O-M-A-D, one meal a day. But what intermittent fasting doesn't tell you, and one of the problems that we're gonna see in this video is what are you gonna eat during that, that window of period of time? And that's gonna be critical when you're looking at these studies, hang on. So this study was the first clinically supervised controlled feeding trial in humans on fast to compare if time restricted feeding in a more aggressive sense, like a six hour eating window, if calories are equal, has any benefit. Very interesting findings. So this study was published in Cell Metabolism. What's cool is they gave subjects enough calories to maintain their weight. 
Okay, so it went on for five weeks, okay, and it was a crossover design. So when one group finished, the other group went into the other arm. So what's interesting about this study is they didn't put them on a caloric restriction, they didn't even like match calories. What they did is they said, hey, here's exactly what this person needs to maintain their weight exactly. And here's what this person needs to maintain their weight. And this person, it was so designed to a T, clinically supervised, and absolutely like literal to the T feeding to make them keep their weight. And it worked. Well, that's a great setting up of the study, very controlled. And uh, what is missing is what, what did they eat? <laughs> so looking at the, the study itself and, and actually all the other intermittent fasting studies that are done by funded, funded meaning researchers who get grants to fund it, they all are studying a 50% carbohydrate diet when people eat. It's remarkable. It's 50% carbs, 30% fat, and 20% protein. So I have to editorialize that the studies that are being referenced here are all intermittent fasting studies, but they're 50% carbohydrate, 30% fat, 20% protein. So at a basic level, what you want to do when you're looking at a study, just look at the macros, percent macros. As Jeff Volek has said many times, when you're eating a nutritional ketosis type of diet, carbohydrate isn't a macronutrient. It doesn't have to be. But I've learned that just as a summary measure, look at the percentage of the daily calories as 50% carbs, 30% fat, 20% protein in this paper. And whether you call it a Mediterranean diet or whatever, but you want to get that macronutrient breakdown. In this one, it was 50% carbs, 18% protein, 30% fat for a time-restricted feeding study. In this one, 50% carbohydrate, 30%, fat, 15. You're getting the point? These aren't really studies of nutritional ketosis. So time-restricted feeding or intermittent fasting doesn't really say anything about what you eat during that time, although these are all junk food free sorts of diets because it's a, these are research studies. But when you're looking at information about what to eat, I want you to eat protein. We're made of protein. It should be protein first in your thinking. And then the macros, if you're doing a diet of nutritional ketosis type, you're usually 5% of your daily calories as carbohydrate, or maybe 10%. Uh, and then that'll depend on how much you're eating for the day. But to look at these research papers, it's interesting. Some of them didn't even put the, that macronutrient breakdown in the abstract. So you have to go into the methods section to see exactly. So basically we're, we're here now summarizing. We're talking about eating carbs once a day. Well, they did that. So one group ate in a six hour aggressive fasting window. Okay, and they couldn't eat past 3 p.m. The other group ate in a 12 hour block. But remember, it didn't matter with calories because it was all equal, macros were equal, spacing was obviously different, but as close to equal as they could get in terms of the sequencing. Okay, so the only thing that was different was the timing, period. No calorie difference individually as a percentage or relatively speaking. Here's what they found. Insulin sensitivity improved. Who would have thought? You take a break from food, insulin sensitivity is going to improve. But insulin sensitivity didn't just improve in the short term. Beta cell function improved. Pancreatic function improved. So over a five-week period, they had significant improvements in just the ability to process carbohydrates and manufacture insulin. Okay, well, guess what else happened? There was a decrease in reactive oxygen species. This is fascinating to me because reactive oxygen species is a driver of aging. Okay, so from a longevity perspective, for a long time, for like the longest time up until probably 15 years ago, 10 years ago, we thought that reactive oxygen species, ROS, oxidative stress, was the primary driver of aging. It could still be a primary driver, but we've since found a lot of other things that are driving it. Okay, mitochondrial stuff that's beyond that, but ROS is still a big one, oxidative stress. The fact that just compressing eating window in an aggressive time reduced ROS is very interesting. Oxidative stress went down, but who would have thought? If you stop eating for a little bit, maybe you give yourself a chance for endogenous antioxidants to actually do the job. And that's, I think, a good sort of paradigm shift that's occurring. You don't have to eat three, four, five meals a day. Breakfast is not necessarily the most important 
meal of the day, which the cereal manufacturers would love you to believe. So eating less often allows your body to heal itself, to repair itself. I think you know, fasting has been part of every major religion as a therapeutic or healing process, uh, even kind of uh, even spiritually to, to be uh, ascetic or, or to get real, rid of worldly sorts of, of uh, connections. You don't have to think of it in that way, but it's more just letting your body heal itself. Autophagy is the repair of your own body. So you don't have the inputs coming in that you have to deal with. Eating is a stress and you don't have that stress when you're not eating, even in the context of eating carbs once a day, as these studies are showing. I love this study because it's just, it's really hard to poke holes in it. The other thing that's interesting is that appetite went down. Even though they had to eat the same amount, appetite went down, right? So they were maintaining weight, but they had less desire to eat, but they ate anyway because they had to, because they were eating to maintain weight, but they actually didn't even want to eat that much. So it's like some would say, well, the benefits of intermittent fasting as far as the consumption is concerned and the lack of appetite comes because you're restricting your stomach shrinking. And that could be true. But in this particular case, they were feeding them just enough to maintain weight and they still had a reduction in appetite. So you know, I've seen that clinically as well, where, or heard that, where people will tell me that if they have breakfast, it makes them more hungry during the day and they eat more. Now, it's not true for everyone. Let me know your, your, your response down below. Does breakfast make you want to eat more or eat less? So the classic teaching is that our, our system is like a gas tank on a car and that you fill up until you're full. And so eating shouldn't make you want to eat more. Although some people tell me that, which kind of makes sense sort of from a standpoint of if you came upon an animal or you, you killed an animal, that animal, you had to eat it because it would spoil. It was only relatively recently that we, we as humans learned how to preserve the food. So eating might make you want to eat more in that context. There, there shouldn't be a break uh, on how much you eat uh, if you couldn't you know, have it you know, an hour later, so to, for example. Uh, so I wonder what your response is. Does breakfast make you want to eat more? Of course, in the context of a low carb diet, please. So there's a good chance that even after the study, maybe they would continue to lose weight. But it gets better in the fact that they crossed over and those that did the 12 hour went to the six hour and they had the same effects. So it was like double proven in this metabolic, like supervised situation. The thing that makes me happy about this study is this one actually looked at real fasting compared to some of these other studies that are looking at 12 hours or 14 hours or sometimes even 16 hours. That's just not enough time. And I've preached this for so long and yes, I'm tooting my horn here, but I have like, if you want the benefits of fasting, you need to go more aggressive. The caveat with this is I don't think that everyone should just model this. This was a controlled situation for five weeks, which is about as far as I would probably push it in this case before it might be too much fasting. However, calories were set to keep the metabolism somewhat high. So maybe it would be okay if you were doing it this way. But the short term, like three times a week, more aggressive fasting is probably the way to go. And I think this kind of study demonstrates that compared to the other study that was published in the Annals of Internal Medicine just a couple of weeks ago that says like, hey, 14 hour fasts every day, don't do that much. However, let me make a note. And I talked about this in that other video that broke that study down. A 14 hour fast still showed improvements in insulin resistance in their HOMA IR. It wasn't highlighted in a lot of people's reviews of that study because it was statistically insignificant. But when you actually look at the literal graph, it's pretty darn significant. And if you know scientific journals at all, you know that statistically significant and absolute significance, and like what it actually is in real life, it's a little bit different because it's more about the parameters that are set on the study versus the actual outcome. So it means that it was not statistically significant beyond what was pretty much expected, but it was still significant enough to say, hey, it's significant. Bottom line, it works. I'll see you tomorrow. So these studies and the, the NIH researchers, I, I recall doing intermittent fasting studies are using carbs during that one meal a day. When I teach a low carb keto diet, I teach flexibility. If you wanna eat more frequently, you can. If you wanna eat three meals a day, you can, but you have to stay away from carbs. 
what happens there is your body goes into nutritional ketosis or just changes metabolism to fat burning it's the same way to say it and that can have healing effects in and of itself it would be great to see a study of intermittent fasting one meal a day in the context of a low carb diet versus those who eat multiple times a day in the context of a low carb diet i haven't seen that study done yet so i'm still teaching now to let your body tell you when to eat use flexibility in the timing but stay away from the carbs as the general rule and you're going to get the benefits of fasting of not eating because that is really fat burning so fat burning is what happens when you're fasting and so when you're not eating so much you're going into fat burning and that's what happens all the time when you're eating a low carb keto diet i hope that's helpful if you like please like subscribe ring the notification bell but i'm putting out new videos on wednesdays and fridays If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out adapterlifeacademy.com.